and this is the ultimate guide to studying the Bible. I'm really going to try and cover everything in this one video. So please use my timestamps in the description to skip to the parts that's going to be valuable to you. I just feel like there's too many Christians that don't read their Bible and they have no idea what they're missing. So I'm here to teach you not only how to enjoy it, but how to actually apply it to your life. First, I want to talk about why it is so important to know the Bible. And the ultimate reason is that by reading the Bible, we get to know God. And how can you call yourself a Christian if you don't even know the God you're serving? You see, the Bible is our guide. It's filled with insights and secrets to life. It's literally God handing us a user's manual on how to do this thing called life. And not only how to do it, but how to do it His way. Way. The more you know God's character, the easier it is for you to identify His voice and His guidance. You see, the Bible is alive and it is our weapon against the enemy's attacks. Because if you don't know the Bible, it's easy for the devil to deceive and manipulate you because you will mistake the devil's lies for God's truth. So what is Bible study? Because a lot of Christians read one verse a day and they think that's enough. But the book of James tells us that if you don't apply the word to your life, Reading it is meaningless. So when we study scripture, we take notes and we do research on the context and we look up definitions and we look at the original Greek and Hebrew text. We compare translations and we see how can we apply this to our life. So where do you start? I didn't know this when I began my Bible studying journey, but it is structured so specifically. And once you understand the layout of the Bible, it becomes so easy to decide which book to read. So in the Old Testament, religion was a set of rules they had to follow and if they broke one of those rules, they had to make a sacrifice, like a burnt offering. But God knew that because of our sinful nature, we will always fall short and we will never be able to follow all of these rules without failure. So he sent his son Jesus to die for our sins, the ultimate sacrifice. And so from the New Testament going forward, religion is no longer a set of rules to follow. It's now a relationship that we obtain through Jesus. Jesus. Jesus is now our direct link to God. Now it doesn't matter where we are or who we are, we can talk to God. The main reason people fail or just give up is because they try to read the Bible from the first page to the last. But the Bible isn't in chronological order. So before studying the books of the Bible, do research on the structure of the Bible and really learn the differences between all of the genres. I would advise anyone new to start with one of the Gospels, especially if you don't really understand why we worship Jesus and why we call ourselves Christians because it's basically different perspectives of Jesus's life so not only do we read about who he is and what he came to do for us but we learn about his values and he gives a lot of teachings in the gospel so in return we learn about who we are in Christ and the values we're supposed to have so Jesus is the foundation of Christianity that's the basic knowledge you should have before diving into the rest of the Bible afterwards I really recommend Paul's letters in the New Testament just for the main reason that there's so many things you can highlight and actually apply to your life. Stay away from the Old Testament in the beginning because it's going to confuse you and it's probably going to bore you because you still have to build that skill of Bible studying and interpreting what you're reading and reading in context before you tackle the Old Testament. So when I'm looking for a next book to study, I always feel like God tells me or shows me one way or another which book he wants me to read next. So aside from the different genres, there's also different translations. And the reason for this is that the original scrolls were either Hebrews or Greek. So someone had to translate it into more modern languages so that we can read it today. And it's so overwhelming trying to find a translation that works for you just because there's so many different options. So the first thing you need to know is that there are three different types of translations. The first type is the most accurate and it's called the word for word translations. I use that just to double check my translation and compare how my translation, the NIV, says it differently than the original scrolls. The second type of translation is your thought for thought. So these are also very accurate, but the same construction has been changed and some words have been changed to match our language in today's world. When I first started reading the Bible, I read the NLT and then my mentor told me that it's actually more paraphrased than thought for thought. And I didn't want to study something that's not accurate. So 
I found that the NIV works best for me. And then the last type of translation is the least accurate. It's the paraphrase. And I would not recommend you have this as your everyday Bible because it's Bible scholars who wrote the translation with their own interpretation. So it wasn't translated from the scrolls. It's their own interpretations of the verses. And I use that when I don't understand what I'm reading. Before I show you my Bible studying method, I want to give you three tips to creating your own. And the first one is to get a schedule that works for you. You see, when I started studying the Bible, I told myself that I would do two hours every single night and I burnt out so quickly because I just couldn't stick to it. That is humanly impossible. So then I said, okay, two nights a week. And because I could stick to that consistently, I wanted more. And now I moved up to every second night. The most important thing is that you should be able to stick to it consistently. The second tip I have for you is to be patient. The more you read the Bible, the more you'll understand it and the better you'll get at interpreting it. You see, when you just start reading it, you're going to want to highlight everything. But the more you develop your skill of Bible studying, you will be able to realize, oh, this is not so important to highlight. This is important to highlight. And you'll be able to do cross-referencing, which is where you read something in this passage and it reminds you of something you read in another passage. As a perfectionist, it was really frustrating trying to create a method that works for me. And I wouldn't have been so close to God right now if I gave up studying the Bible a few months ago and I wouldn't have evolved the method that I use to where it is today. The thing is, it's always going to be improving. It's never going to stay the same because I will always find new tricks to studying the Bible. You're going to have to prioritize God and have the discipline to open the Bible. But after a while, it's going to turn into desire and you're going to want to read the Bible. Like, I can't wait to read the Bible and see what God has to tell me. But I haven't always felt like this. You just have to force yourself in the beginning until you get hooked. The third tip is the most important one and it is to go slowly really really slowly i cannot stress this enough so when i was trying to bible study for two hours every single night i would in that two hours read like five chapters but nothing would stay in my brain because i'm just reading too much so now i bible study every second night and i don't put a time limit on it i study one chapter a night and if that chapter takes me two hours that's fine if that chapter takes me 10 minutes that's fine but i'm only focusing on that one chapter because I really try to see how can I apply this in my life. Finally, I can show you my Bible studying method. So I'm first going to show you my Bible study journal, which is in good notes. And it is this little book over here with the butterflies. And the first kind of section that I have is my Christian diary. So I used to name it Proof of God. And basically what I write in here is every single time I realized that God did something in my life or he answered a prayer or he showed me something, told me something, I will write it down here. One day when something maybe happens and I'm hopeless or I'm not as strong in my religion, I can come back to this and see how amazing God has been. On the next page, it's another books of the Bible. I'm going to delete this one because I'm rewriting all of the genres with like a small description of what the genre is about and I just think that's very useful for in the future when I want to read a book I can just come back to this page and see oh this genre is about that so I have to study this book with that mindset. What you see down here is my color codes. Now color codes are so hard to figure out and find a method that works for you because there's just so many different categories that you can highlight and as I said in the beginning you just want to highlight everything but this works for me. So orange to pink is God's character. Anything that tells me about who God is and how he acts I will highlight that in either orange, red or pink because remember the purpose of reading the Bible is getting to know God. Profoundness or I call it wow moments. So every time I read something and I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that that is so cool. I highlight it in purple. Dark blue is my identity in Christ. So anything that tells me about who I am and how I'm supposed to act and the values I'm supposed to have as a Christian, I will highlight that in dark blue. Then light blue is the most important highlight and I'll show you why when we get into the Bible app, but I call it themes. Turquoise is guide, so these are like do's and don'ts in the Bible. And then green to yellow is confusion and questions. Every time I don't understand what I'm reading or I have a question or I wanna research something, I will make a note on it in green or yellow. And then it's just my Bible studying pages, which I will show you more details of that when we do the Bible study session together. Looking at the style of my pages, you'll notice that I use a very specific format from the colors that I use to the font that I write in. So let's get into that. 
I basically assigned a color to every single category of the Bible and I did this at random. I literally did it in rainbow order. So as you can see, my general letters are orange. So let's say I decide I want to study the book of James, which is a general letter. That means that the layout color of all of my pages for James will be some shade or version of orange. So I start by writing the title of the book in calligraphy, followed by a small description. Now the way I word this description differs for every single category of the Bible. For example, for the general letters, I found that using the format of an actual letter works best. So to, from, and subject. But when we look at the gospel, the first line tells us more about whose perspective if we're reading from followed by how this person viewed Jesus and then the last line explains what this gospel is trying to get across. The highlighted headings indicate sections of the book and I'll show you later how I divide the chapters into sections. As you can see, I make use of an arrow list system. So a filled in arrow indicates the chapter numbers and I leave an open line after every chapter. I also use a different arrow for every single level I write in. So level one is the filled in, level two is an open arrow, level three is a plain arrow and then level four is a simple hyphen. Now I mainly use the black ball pen except for the highlighted headings which is my white fountain pen and the page titles which is my calligraphy pen but when I do use color it's either for a subtitle a side note or application Every time I read something and I want to write down practically how I'm going to apply the verse to my life, I write it down in colors so that it stands out when I scan over my Bible study pages. So for example, in this chapter here, I read about heavenly wisdom. And instead of just remembering that heavenly wisdom is pure, peace-loving, considerate, submissive, I'm going to ask myself, well, how can I be more considerate? How can I be more submissive? And that statement will be written in color because that is how I'm actually going to apply the verse to my life. So I use the Bible app to do all of my Bible studying, all of my Bible reading. And if you don't have the Bible app, I really recommend you download it because I'm going to show you how to use it to your advantage and use it effectively because it is such a powerful tool. And that's the main reason I wanted to make this video. So when I first started using it, it was so overwhelming just because of the highlights and the bookmarks and the images, notes, and there's just so many features and I didn't know what to use each feature for. But I finally figured it out and I think the way I use it now is like the perfect way to use it, if I do say so myself. So I did show you my color codes and this is basically how my Bible looks after studying it. But what I wanted to show you is the themes, the light blue. When I go to the bookmarks page and I go to labels, you can see that I have a bunch of labels here and it's different themes that the Bible covers. So when I read something that talks about marriage, instead of just highlighting it light blue, I bookmark it. So let's just select something. I'll bookmark it. I'll choose the color light blue. Let's choose that version. And then I'll label it as marriage. There we go. I'll add it to my marriage. And this is so beneficial because we are so quick to find opinions elsewhere instead of seeing what does the Bible say about my current struggle. And because of the bookmarks, I can now just come to the Bible about all of the stuff that I've bookmarked so far. So what does the Bible say about obedience? Ah, here's my bookmark. This is everything I've read about obedience. And this really helps you to create links in the Bible as well and see how obedience in the book of James is talked about versus how it's mentioned in the book of Romans. Then I also use notes. So when you have a physical Bible and you write on the sides of it, like, you know, you highlight it and then with pen, you'll write something on the side of it. That is what I use the note tab for. So this is the note tab. And it's basically when I just have something extra to add or say, and when I'm done studying a Bible, I'll go back to all of the greens and see if I can answer that question now that I'm done studying the book, not the Bible, the book. Most of the stuff in gray are notes, just so that I can identify, oh, I have a note on that verse. So if I go to related, me, this is the note that I have on that verse. But it's not always gray because sometimes I'm making a note on something that's profound. As you can see, that's purple or something that's a guide to life. Another feature that the Bible app has is images. So every single time I see a verse that I want to memorize, I create an image of it. The Bible is our weapon against the enemy's attacks. So when I hear a lie from the devil, I can contradict it with God's truth. And you can only contradict it with God's truth if you know what God's truth is. Let me give 
give you an example. When I'm feeling stressed out, I'll remind myself of Matthew 6 verse 34. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. So I'll add a bunch of images as I see them, but it must be something that I'll be able to use in my everyday life. So the ones that don't have hearts are the ones I haven't memorized yet. And then the ones that do have hearts are the ones that I have memorized. And during the day, if I go over here, I have a reminder that comes up 3 o'clock every day which reminds me of my verse of the week. It's not something that should overwhelm you. Just read it in the morning, have a notification come up in the afternoon, read it at night, do it for a week, and by the end of the week, it should be in your brain. And the crazy thing is that every single time I have a verse of the week, something happens where I have to remind myself of that verse and actually apply it to my life. So it's really cool. Every Sunday night when I have my quiet time, I kind of read through all of my verse images. And then once I start a new verse for the new week, I'll also go back and look at all of the verse images from the same book. Prayer, I use this kind of like a prayer journal. So if I go to my prayer list, basically anything that I'm struggling with, I won't do a prayer entry for all of my prayers but just stuff that I know is going to take time to process and time for God to answer me. For example, I am praying for some people's salvation. So what's really cool about this is that you can go back and look at your prayers and see how God has answered you and how the things that you've prayed for actually happened. The cool thing about this is we can actually share prayers with other people. So community is one of the coolest things about the Bible app because we can share our faith with other people and it's been made easier than ever before. So as I said, I did a fasting plan with all of my friends and this is the one here chronological Bible plan I'm busy doing, reading the Bible in chronological order. Doing plans with other people is so fun because at the end of every single plan you can talk it over with each other and kind of discuss what has been talked about. So I am now starting a journey of gluttony and I really want to learn more about that. So if I go to my prayers, I have created a prayer about it and I also want to do some plans about it. So I read my plans on the nights that I don't do Bible study because every second night I have my Bible study session and the nights in between I have a quiet time and that is where I do my prayers and my plans. So yeah, in the videos tabs there's also a bunch of other resources that you can use and events to show you the cool Christian events that's going on around your location. In the community tab over here you can see what all of your friends has been reading and highlighting and all the notes they're making and it's busy raining I know and that's just what makes this so cool the fact that you can Bible study together, ensemble, I wanted to say that in French. Anyway, speaking of doing Bible study together, I'm going to take you through one of my Bible study sessions. I'm currently busy studying the book of Matthew and in this session I'm going to do chapter 17. Now before I start studying a new book, I always do research on the category the book is in and I also watch the overview of the book from the Bible Project on YouTube. And this is just to give me some context and a better idea of what I will be reading and also help you figure out the approach that I will be taking while studying the book. I will leave a list of my favorite resources that helps me with my Bible study in the description of this video, as well as my favorite churches and pastors who I follow and whose sermons I listen to on a regular basis. Now, when I start a new chapter, I first choose a shade that I will be using for all of the colors in that chapter. So one chapter might be pastel colors, and for this chapter, I chose darker colors. After writing the chapter number, I open the Bible app on the right hand side and first go through what I read in the previous chapter just to refresh my mind. And before studying the chapter, I first read through the whole thing at least once just so that I have an idea of what the chapter is about. And then I'll be able to summarize the whole chapter into one sentence. And I write the sentence next to the chapter number in my Bible study journal. Now when reading it the second time, this is when I really go into detail. I create my highlights, notes and bookmarks and I also journal on the left hand side in good notes. I do try to keep everything in the Bible app just so that I have all of my notes in the same place. So the type of things I would write in my Bible journal is like definitions. If I don't understand a word I'll look it up and write it down there or even applications. So when I'm planning out how I'm going to apply a verse to my life that would go in my Bible journal but most of the time I usually just summarize the chapter in my Bible journal so you'll see on the left hand side that sometimes I use bullets instead of arrows. And these bullets are the same color as the category. So I'm reading Matthew, which is dark blue. So the bullets will also be dark blue. And what I write next to bullets is like key principles out of the chapter or explaining the context. 
When I don't understand something, I first of all compare versions to see how other translations have phrased it and after that I'll go to Google. Now you have to be very careful because obviously not all sources are reliable like Wikipedia. I do sometimes use Wiki but my main go-to is a website called Bible Ref. Now this website explains the context and interpretations of every single verse in the Bible so they are so useful for your Bible studying and sometimes I just type out my question in Google and have a look at what it throws out and when I want to do research on a specific topic like eternal life or the end times I usually watch YouTube videos about it or I listen to podcasts and my last resort is always to go to my mentor this is someone who inspires you spiritually someone who you look up to and helps you grow in your faith so this is usually someone who has great knowledge of the Bible so you can ask them theological questions or even just go to them for life advice and the best place to find a mentor is at church now for all the perfectionists out there studying the Bible digitally is going to be a game changer because you can always go back and change something nothing you write is permanent so to keep yourself from feeling overwhelmed there's one principle that you have to remember and it's that you will always reread the chapter that you are currently studying meaning that you don't have to get it perfect the first time I believe that God will tell you what he wants you to know the moment you're reading it and the next time you read it he's going to reveal something else to you so you don't have to interpret and find the message behind every single verse and the same goes for your highlights and your bookmarks as I said your Bible studying system is going to change and improve the more you study the Bible so the next time I read this chapter I might realize oh this highlight is more purple than it's actually blue so then I can simply just change it because I'm doing it digitally and the best tip I can give you is to include God into your Bible study sessions. I always start off with a prayer asking God to really help me interpret and understand what I'll be reading and then as I read it I ask him to show me how I can apply it to my life and when I don't understand something I always go to him. God wants us to go to him first. He is the most reliable source. Okay, giveaway time. So one of my friends has her own Christian brand called Forgiven Impact. You can go check it out on Instagram. And one of the things that she sells is custom painted Bibles. And I decided to get one for one of you guys. So this is how it looks. And it's this turquoise color. Obviously it had to be turquoise. It is a NIV Bible, which is great because I think that's like the best style. Is it English? It's English and it's an NIV Bible. Okay, great. And the only rules to enter is you just have to leave a comment down below. Um, I, w I would really appreciate it if you are subscribed, but that's not a requirement because I just want to get this out to someone who will really use it and really need it. So leave me a comment down below saying you would like the Bible and maybe a reason why. But yeah, I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you have any questions about Bible studying and you have some tips you could share, leave everything in the comments section down below. Let's help each other out and I'll see you guys in my next video.